Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. We're gonna get down to some serious business and troubleshoot a Premiere Pro project. All right, we've got a very long list of uh, troubleshooting tips to apply. Hopefully we don't go all the way down to the bottom. Um, I've always had success in at least one thing on this list. So here's the first one. Are you quitting or crashing during a render? Let's talk about if you're looking at this tutorial because the clock is ticking and you need to get a file out now. All right, so the very first thing to do is render in the other program. Meaning if you're in Premiere Pro and you're rendering via export, try rendering in Media Encoder. If Media Encoder is not working, try rendering in Premiere Pro. Yes, they're the same engine, but sometimes it just works to do it in the other program. At this point, we're not trying to work out why. We're just trying to get your file out. So if you're in AME, try it in Premiere Pro. If you're in Premiere Pro, try it in Media Encoder. Okay, that's the first thing. None of those things solved it. The next one is to turn off the GPU. And you can do that both in Premiere Pro and in Media Encoder. Sometimes, due to a driver conflict for whatever reason, and again, we don't care about why, clock is ticking, fix it. Let's go shut it off. In Premiere Pro, in the File menu, Project Settings, General, it's turned on by default, Playback, Mercury Playback Engine Software only, and you'll notice that the yellow line will go away. We're going to choose software only, click OK, delete the previews, try to render it. Might take a little bit longer, but a little bit longer is better than never. Where is it? Media Encoder. Let's go have a look. Media Encoder, it's down here at the bottom. Turn that off. Now you've turned that off. I can't believe how many times that has solved the problem. Um, now the why. The why is usually a driver problem um, or an update in, in Premiere Pro or the operating system. Um, and sometimes companies update their operating system that breaks the drivers. And then sometimes Adobe's hands are tied. They cannot do anything until that vendor, Apple, updates uh, those drivers. Always keep your drivers up to date. All right. So if that hasn't uh, done it, let's go back to our list. And let's try to refresh your project. So sometimes you can save the project you're in, close the project, create a new project, go to the media browser and import the project. If your project has a ton of different sequences in it and you have one main sequence you wanna get out, don't try to import the whole thing. Try to import the one sequence you need to get out and cross your fingers and hopefully it makes it in and you get it out, great. Forget the why, again, we're trying to get stuff out. All right, if you're working off of a network, try to run the media locally because sometimes it's a network issue. Premiere Pro is accessing the media through a network and the network is the problem. Um, log in as a different user. This is very simple to do on both Mac and Windows. Log out as your current user, create a new user and uh, log in as that, make sure they have admin rights and then see if they can now export or import uh, or output or do whatever and get rid of the problem. All right, none of that has worked. All right, let's talk about cleaning the cache. One of the things that Premiere Pro does um, a job of in the background and that's caching a bunch of uh, uh, stuff. And it's not rendering things, it's just caching things in the background. Occasionally, the cache gets corrupt. Don't ask why, fix it. So quit Premiere Pro, hold the Option key, Shift key on the Mac, Alt key, Shift key on Windows after you launch Premiere Pro. So double click on it and then quickly hold it. You'll know you've done the right thing if the dialog box that comes up doesn't have any previous programs. Oh yeah, the other thing, I should have started by this. Back everything up, back up, back up, back. If you haven't backed up your preferences, workspaces, presets, Oh, by the time we get to the end, I'm going to show you a nuclear script and I'll share that with you that cleans everything out, including your presets. Back up, back up, back up. You should always be backing up. All right. Next, let's talk about manually deleting two folders and then have Premiere Pro create them. So let's say nothing has worked to this point. Even the, the 
cache clearing hasn't worked. We're gonna manually go behind Premiere Pro's back and throw these folders away. Uh, I'll show you where these folders are. It's important that you quit Premiere Pro when you do this. So don't keep it running and then go behind its back. Um, you quit Premiere Pro and, and delete them. So where are they? Let's go have a look. In the edit menu on Windows, the Premiere Pro window on the Mac, go to Preferences and go to Media. Make a note where these folders are. Now I've moved this one. If you haven't, it's on your Macintosh HD or on your C drive which is not the greatest place for this. This cache should be somewhere separate. So notice where they are, and I've got this database is smaller, but you need to locate where this is, find it, and uh, delete both of these folders. Remember, you have to quit Premiere Pro, go to those locations, delete those folders, empty the trash, then start Premiere Pro, and it will make those folders again. This way you're guaranteed that there's no corrupt stuff. Yes, Premiere Pro will have to create uh, some little files here and there, some audio waveforms and things, but if this gets your file out and gets things loaded and gets the project working, great, all right? So that's the next step. Next up on the list is to do some deep cleaning. So now we're going to run some scripts and I'll show you where this is. This is the regular Creative Cloud Cleaner script that's been around since CS5 and it still works on all versions of CC. It does some cleaning and this does uh, help. So let's go look at where this is. Again, I'll, I'll put all the links for this. This is the Creative Cloud Cleaner that you can download and you can um, Adobe Creative Cloud Cleaner tool, that's the um, Mac version. Run the cleaner tools from the Windows section. There it is, it's a .exe. Okay, the next script I'm gonna share with you, there's a, um, it's a command line interface command for the terminal on OS X, and it's a .bat file on Windows. Both of these are scripts. They're compressed in a zip file that I will give you a link to. Run these at your own risk, I have to say that. But let me tell you, I run these and they have solved a problem, especially when I got my Blackmagic camera and Blackmagic stuff was installed on my system and I was having problems. When I ran this script, it, it completely nukes everything. So it cleans the cache, the prefs, your presets, and I've, I've never had it fail on me. It's always fixed everything, but it is a nuclear script. It won't hurt your files, your computer, or anything else. It just will go deep cleaning to all the places that the other cleaner won't go. I'll make those available. Use it as your own, at your own risk. I use it all the time. I just have to say that, okay? So for that one, you quit Premiere Pro, you have to run it in the terminal. So on, the, on Windows, you can double click on a .bat file and it will load the command line interface. Uh, hopefully on the terminal with um, OS X, it'll do the same and it'll walk you through. It's just a typ typical command line interface giving you a yes, no, whatever, and, and you run that. Okay, now the total nuke job is to go to your uh, Creative Cloud desktop application and uninstall Premiere Pro completely uninstall it from there, then run the, um, the Premiere Pro cleaner script, the nuke job one that I'm gonna show you. Then, um, well, sorry, uninstall Premiere Pro, reboot, run the cleaner, reboot, and then reinstall Premiere Pro. It's really important that whenever you're doing deep cleaning like this, you're rebooting your computer. And you know what, sometimes just rebooting a computer and doing a cold boot um, will get things uh, going. Okay, so now let's talk about files not loading correctly. You import a file and only the video comes in or only the audio comes in. Now, I'll tell you what I'm doing with great success. Since 2015.3, Premiere Pro on Windows does not require QuickTime to be installed anymore. Um, Adobe has fully licensed an, an uh, Apple QuickTime. It's now 64-bit, which is way better. So for me, I have no Apple software installed on my Windows computers at all. 
I run Premiere Pro and I can load any ProRes, any codec, any QuickTime element that I want and I just uh, work with it, no problem. Obviously I can't encode, I can't make ProRes from here, but I don't care about that. I just wanna be able to load everything. My Blackmagic camera, all of these files are saved as ProRes files that I edit with no Apple software at all. This has solved every problem for me. That's the 2015.3 release has native QuickTime installed. Sometimes you need to have a codec installed that isn't installed. I'm gonna show you how to force the Dolby codec to it be installed. This is when you don't have any audio. Where did the audio file when I import my clip that I know has audio and video? All right, let's go back over to uh, Premiere Pro. And in the little and you can do this with a new program, a new project. Down here, click and create some bars and tone. Uh, I'm just going to make mine HD. Doesn't really matter. Drag that bars uh, and tone. Drag that down to make a new sequence. And then export this out, which we can export out through media. On the right hand side in this list, you don't see this, you need a new version. Find another codec that requires Dolby, uh, but I'm using the HEVC. Over to audio, change it from AAC to Dolby Digital, and if Dolby Digital shows up, it means the codec ha has been loaded. But I've had it several times when I've got to this point, I chose, I got a dialog box saying, it's not loaded, you want me to load it, click OK. It takes about two seconds, it's loaded, and bang -o, all of a sudden all the Dolby codecs are loaded. You can also go through here into some other uh, settings like H.264, and you can choose Dolby there too. And sometimes the H.264, you'll get a prompt saying a certain codec isn't loaded, Try it, click on it, and let it go. Okay, so that's a good way to get your stuff in for that. Now, let's talk about uh, permissions on a folder. There's a very odd case where there is a codec installer folder within your computer, both Mac and Windows, that has the wrong permissions. It has a read-only permission, and then Premiere Pro is trying to install into that, and the operating system saying, nope, you don't have rights, and something screws up. You don't necessarily get a prompt telling you what I just said, you just get an error. So let's go find that particular codec. So it's on the Windows, it's in the um, users, public, Public Documents, Adobe, Installed, Codex. There should be a 1.0 in there. Open that up. And there you'll see Dolby and different ones sitting in there. If Dolby didn't get in there, um, then it wouldn't be in there. So very important that those codecs and this folder, if we go out one level um, and get the properties for that folder, Got to make sure that read only is turned off. And now, um, actually, we should probably do it, get, go all the way back out to installed codecs, right click, choose properties, and turn off read only. Click OK, click OK, and now it is not read only. I haven't really had any problems, so I don't even know why that was checked like that. But that's another one that can uh, get you into hot water. All right. Sometimes um, I would reinstall QuickTime, as I just mentioned. Uh, I don't have that issue anymore with 2015.3, but on anything previous to that, even on Windows and on Mac, sometimes I just reinstall QuickTime over top of QuickTime, not uninstall, just Whatever the install is, double click and install again. Hopefully you have a, an install hanging around. Apple doesn't make it easy to find QuickTime to reinstall it, but try to do that. Um, and then look for other codecs that might be fighting. I, I, I mentioned earlier about my Blackmagic camera installed some junk. So Premiere Pro needs to have an, a... Um, an importer that it understands what's coming in. If another program that's installed at the very lowest level, because you have your operating system, you have drivers, you have graphics drivers, you have codecs, oh, and then you have Premiere Pro at the top, 
sometimes those things in the middle are, are misbehaving. One of them grabs the, the format before Premiere Pro can get the format. So as Premiere Pro is loading in that file, something from Blackmagic I found said, hey, I've got that codec, no problem. And, and so then Premiere Pro says, all right, you load it. And then the codec says, nah, I'm failing. It's like, dude, leave me alone and let Premiere Pro use that. So I nuked a whole bunch of Blackmagic stuff off my system and it just happened to load much better. Premiere Pro had a better handle on that. Hopefully one of these things will help you. The nuclear cleaning Premiere Pro cleaner script that I'm giving you has solved every problem for me. But remember, you use it as your own risk and you have to back up all of your presets and all of your workspaces and all your preferences before you use it. Hopefully you've uh, found this useful. If you're new to Video Reveal, take a moment and subscribe. If you want to take your support up a new level, join us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and thanks again to uh, Mitch Wood, who helped me on this, a lot of his great tips. Uh, hopefully between the two of us, we've solved your problem and uh, we'll get you going uh, really well.